Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome one of the funniest comedians in South Africa. One of my favorite comedians. Um, I've toured with him all over the place, especially he took me to Mtata in the Eastern Cape for my first time ever. So many stories I can tell about CSA. And I want to take this opportunity now to tell some of the stories um, during this time when we are all stuck in front of computers and laptops and iPads and phones, Androids, I, I, what, what, and, uh, and talk about some of the things we ne you never see us um, talk about during stand-up comedy, uh, stand-up comedy shows, maybe one or two things you've heard in interviews. But tonight, I just want us to have fun. I want you guys to meet Siasa, those who don't know him. And more than anything, I'm looking forward to to having you guys uh, get used to coming to my live uh, interviews and stuff and shows on my YouTube channel. I know I'm also going out live on Facebook. Um, if you are on Facebook, just come, try it. Just come come to YouTube, but same same thing. And please put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen. You can comment. I can see your comments. I can put them up on the screen. And uh, you can ask questions, send compliments, send money. If you can send money, guys, that would be great. Uh, I am starting a GoFundMe page. And I will be guided by my Ray Boss. Uh, with the tint of ginger and uh, this guy's data is getting child so let me just bring in CSA yeah? um, actually just if you can comment quickly who here hasn't heard of CSA yeah? and, and who has or where have you seen him perform live have you seen me perform live uh, who's never seen me performing live that's on this broadcast and who's never seen CSA performing live? You can send comments. I'm watching you. I'll read out your comments as many as I can. Now, please put your hands together. Together. Oh, let's give the vision. Some serious people here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand this technology. I was I down there know. now, all of a sudden, I on the side. No, this one you just press that link, but I'll show you how to use it. I'm using uh, StreamYard. Oh, I didn't know. So, the nice thing about it, instead of when I go live directly on Facebook or YouTube and it's just me on screen talking to myself, yeah, I can send you a link. I can have about six people here. Up to six people. Oh. Um, and then I can choose who's on screen when. Uh, I can also send a link to anyone that's watching and they can join us, but I'll have to put them in. But I can put the link, for instance, in the comments and uh, your fans can talk to you. You can see them. Yeah. For some reason, we can say thank you, lockdown, because now we are getting educated now. No, lockdown, how has lockdown changed your life? You, you you can see I'm all over the internet. Like I'm like I'm working on the internet. Uh my lady here, she's teaching me everything. So yeah, when it comes to the internet, like yo, the lockdown has cooled us very well. Very well. Um, does has your lady done any interviews with you? Yeah, we, 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 we did some, uh, we started a podcast and then like we, we've been coming up with ideas and ideas like on a daily basis, like we're doing everything. Like to, every day there's something we are doing. Like now, after that live we did on Insta, we took pictures, we were taking pictures, yeah. Every time there's something to do. Will she agree to come on live now with you? Oh, she's already put her come king. Yeah, uh, she's already on her ugly zone. I don't think she would like that. Yeah, she doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's fine. Don't worry. Um, 
Otsiri, is your phone on a tripod? Yeah, it's on a tripod. Okay. No, you're getting the gist of this thing now. Thanks to her, because she was buying these things before lockdown. Uh, the lights, these things, you know, the, the, the yeah. mics, the, the small mics for the... Little did we know we're going to be here. Now these things are coming in handy. But are you sure she didn't know? Hey, you know, you're here. What if your girlfriend? What if your baby mama knew? Kuti, hey, yes, there's something. Yes, 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 there's something. Yeah. <laughs> that was last year, bro. I don't know how her and Bill Gates knew about these things. Yeah. No, yeah. man. It's uh, I'm I'm glad first of all that lockdown has definitely um I've seen the best of you and and a few other comedians I've seen guys just come out on on um uh, on social media you know Mpo Pops um Mtawelanga Tatsun Konzo Nina Hasty Kahiso Keji Mukhadi uh you know Stop No Sons has always mastered this thing and yes. uh, but I was I, I was excited that obviously we all depend on stand up comedy. Yes, and it, it is our everything, you know. Like without it, we are almost all of us. Our careers are almost on hold or over, or we are not mm. making any money, etc. And this opportunity, a lot of guys saw and started creating content, producing content, you know, shooting mm. skits. Yeah. But I was even more excited to see you, you know? Like, yeah. you're, always live, you're always posting on Instagram. And, That's uh, amazing. and then I realized, ah, this nigga is also into YouTube. Mm. And, uh, you know, I wasn't expecting... Uh, I know a lot of people haven't really come around to YouTube, especially South Africans and South African comedians. I mean, it's even hard yeah. for me to have to tell people to come and watch me on YouTube for free, you know? So, how has YouTube been for you? What, when did you start? What's your, what's your journey with your comedy and YouTube? Uh, I would have uh, people, because uh, I've been asking around about uh, uh, uploading material on YouTube and videos. Because like, I, I started seeing comedians. Basically, I started seeing all these uh, social media funny guys, like the, the, your... Your two me stop nonsense, your Lianaba, your Tafaya. All those guys were funny on social media. They started moving to comedy now, all of them moving to stand up comedy. And I felt like, why not as a comedian move into their to their territory? So I started asking them questions as well. But I didn't know how to do it. So I ended up uploading all my stage performances on YouTube. I didn't even realize that I was way past 100 subscribers. Until lockdown, <laughs> I wow. really because when, <laughs> when when the lockdown started, I was on three thousand five hundred subscribers. I didn't even notice because I would just upload something and then yeah, let it be. So yeah, yeah that that is that so, that is my journey in a nutshell. So let me shock you about uh, well my 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 YouTube statistics, right? Ninety seven percent. Of my views mm. are non subscribers. I can imagine. I'm sure. I'm sure. So for every nine, for every ten thousand views I have, only about three hundred to five hundred people of them are subscribers. Mm. I can't understand it. I can't deal with it. But I know it's also because <laughs> a lot of people just get a link from YouTube. Just press the link. Watch and leave you know they don't go to youtube log in subscribe comment ten yeah and, uh, well a lot of my followers or my people don't do that you know they just go in and out do what they want to do i'm uh, sure some people are thinking that youtube chose more data than facebook it's the same <laughs> like, like, yeah, i don't know the more you watch uh, obviously you spend more data but yeah the resolution of what you're watching you can make it small can make it full hd so you can also control how much data you are you are spending there's someone here who says they've 
never heard of you. Uh, Godfrey Mashango. Uh, how many I'll times go- you know, people that, that still don't know you or are you surprised that some people still don't know you? I'm surprised when people know me or know of me. It is very surprising because uh, my my social media numbers are are not of uh, any well known celebrity or uh, comedian. Like I watch uh, all, numbers. if I check about summer, I got fifty k on Instagram. I got I'm close to eight thousand uh, followers on Facebook. I'm on thirty three thousand followers on on uh, Twitter. I'm on four thousand four hundred subscribers. So. I'm still surprised now when I meet people in the streets who happen to know me and my comedy. Yeah, but see, what matters with social media is engagement, you know? Mm. So you can be like me, you have 800,000 followers on Twitter, and then you tweet something, and there's two likes, and there's one reply. (laughs) 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 Oh, you have your your four thousand people on Twitter. You tweet something, and your video has thirty thousand views and two thousand re- retweets across the place. So content matters more than yeah, you know? exactly. But what way, what what, way, what frustrates me the most? What frustrates me the most is sometimes like with these uh, social media experts, like who are doing comedy that side. Like I'd watch them, I'm like. There's nothing funny here, but this clip has like more than 200,000 uh, views and likes and whatnot. And then you as a comedian, you bring that that stage thing and then it's like, no, 50 views and two likes. Yeah. So It's another remember, planet. I've always said to you, what I know for a fact is you are very funny. That's a fact, right? And I've always said Thank to you, you, all you need to do now is get you known or get you well known so that you can sell more tickets, so that you can perform to more people, so that you can sell your DVD shows, your one-man shows to more people. Because that's that's the difference between you and I and any other comedian anywhere in the world. That's funny. Mm. You understand? Yeah. The difference is they sell more tickets. They sell tickets in dollars, in pounds, in euros. You and I sell less tickets than they do. We sell tickets in rands. But mm. there's no superpower. There's no super being when it when you're funny you're funny you know Mm. um and then obviously everybody works hard at it some people are producing their own shows some people have 100 people that work for them some people have teams and teams and teams of promoters that are pushing their shows so those are the technicalities you can work to but when you're funny when you're funny the way you are brah yes yes. and i know you've got so many stories to tell um and and you know, some of your stories now have started appearing or I've started having stories I can tell about traveling with you, going to shows. Um, but, you know, for me, what always fascinated me was between you uh, and uh, uh, what's his name uh, from the first day? Uh, obviously, Kakao. Teo uh, Kakao, Rasta, uh, also, mm. uh, only when I started working with them did I realize how big hitchhiking to gigs was with comedians. You know, I mean, I've seen a lot of mm. people hitchhiking on the road and you take it for granted, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and then I started doing shows. So I'd do shows in Bloemfontein and I'd book uh, Tieho or Rasta. Tieho has a car. Uh, now and then it might have one or two problems. We'll talk to Tiago one of these evenings, uh, right here. Mm. And uh, and then we did a show in Kwako uh, about sure. two, three years ago, I think two years ago, Japan so Comedy Festival. And Tiago was coming from uh, from Welcome, and Rasta was coming from Tennessee. But now, yeah. when we are already in in Kwako, I start checking where they are. Then I find out Rasta is hitchhiking. He's coming mm. with some bag. He's coming. To <laughs> then I call him. You know, he tells me the engine fell in his car, and now he tied the engine to something and he's trying. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know, I have to tell um, 
I have to tell the audience, uh, you and I, well, I started touring and trying to go to all these places where I've never taught or never performed before. I went to Colesberg. I went to Port Alfred. Mm. Uh, I went to Stax Bridge. Uh, uh, I went Stax to all these Bridge. funny places where I had never been, you know, where they had never seen a comedian ever. Uh, mm. in real life, right? And I was doing shows in East London and Port Alfred, and you sent me a message and said, hey, hot man, let me open for you. Don't worry, I'll be there. And I mm. didn't think anything about it, you know? I organized the show. I get to London. First night, we do the show in East London. You are there. And then we travel together, go to Port Alfred the next day, sharp, sharp. So now I have to explain uh, <laughs> to people, you know, this blew my mind. Mm. Um, you guys were like, hey, okay, Sharp Rotman in Kaika. And I saw you guys had a flyer for a show in Tata. In Tata, yeah. And uh, I was going to drive back to Johannesburg. So you guys, we have breakfast. And uh, you are like, hey, Rotman, Sharp, we are leaving. I'm still having breakfast. <laughs> you guys, you and Mvo. Mm. Uh, Zimbo. Mvo, Mvo. Yeah. Another comedian from the Eastern Cape, guys, from Tata. So these guys leave the hotel. They leave the hotel. I'm still having some breakfast myself, songs, my camera crew. Um, I leave, I drive out of my hotel, and I come to the main road, I think the N2. Mm. And I think if I was going the other way, I would go to Joburg. If I go the other way, I'm going towards um, Tata. I come to the street by the gate, by the T-junction, and you and Zimbo are on the other side. <laughs> waiting With the board. Hitchhiking, hitchhiking a ride. Yo, <laughs> that, shit, that shit messed with my mind. See ya. Uh, it, it's normal with us. It was normal with us. And my only quarry was, I've never been to Mchata from Port Alfred. So I don't know the hours. Mvongo was so relaxed. I'm like, bruh, we are going to the beach and swimming. Bruh, I know Mchata is far. But he was so relaxed. I'm like, no, we're going to get there on time. So that's pretty much, that was my first time in Mchata. So pretty much I ended up now saying, guys, come, let's go. We got mm. in the cars. I think my camera crew went and left and went back to Joburg. And uh, I took you guys, we took another car and we started driving to Mtata. We drove past Kunu. I saw Nelson mm. Mandela's house for the first time. We drove past the house. And definitely, you know, got to Mtata, met more comedians, uh, had a show that night. It was a good time, man. It was a good night. But I was just too touched about how confidently someone can just take a gig, I'll show up, and then you still have to hitch a ride, and you still make it to the gig on time. And this other lady in Mtata, last time I went to Mtata, last year in December, she tells me she met her, a favorite comedian, another Eastern Cape comedian. So yeah. she's a doctor. She's like, I was driving back home to King Williamstown, and then I met my favorite comedian, High King. I was so embarrassed because I, I also had a crush on this guy. So I didn't want to stop for him. And then he rejects me in my car. So I just left him there. She's a big fan, seeing a comedian, like High King needing a ride. And they're going to the same city, to the same town. <laughs> so for us, it's, it's not even embarrassing to hike. As long as we get to the gig, we don't care how we come back. That was just mind blowing for me, man. Are you still hitch riding, uh, hitchhiking to some gigs? No, not anymore. Like I, I have not been in that situation, but I don't know when I'll be in that situation again. But uh, no, not not now, not now. But I do take passes though. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah, because we did some gigs. <laughs> <in Cape Town. laughs> yeah, <laughs> you just say to me, you are coming. <laughs> <laughs> We will all... I we get will awkward be... looks now in buses, like people looking at me like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> but some people in the bus know of me. It's, it gets really awkward there. Do 
Do you have a favorite uh, bus service now? Uh, it, yeah, all of them now are work. All of them are work. Greyhound used to be my favorite, but even them now, they are not comfortable anymore. They are in <laughs> demand, so they, <laughs> they are in demand, so they don't respect us. It's like a taxi now. They are treating us like they, we have no choice but to take the bus. Um, obviously, we started doing a lot of shows together, and we used to do December shows. And uh, in Cape Town, uh, mm. at the what's that hotel where Rockwell Hotel, the Rockwell Hotel, where I used to do my shows in December. And I saw you also mm. did your show. And, I did uh, my my second sold out there. Thanks to you, I got to know of the place. So, how was your show? How did it go? And how it was a sold out show. Was amazing. Yeah. At the Rockwell it in Cape Town. House. Huh? At the Rockwell Hotel in Cape Town. Yeah, at the at the same venue, yeah, Rockwell. You know those guys, they 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 know how to treat an artist. You know, they gave me all the ticket sales and stuff like that and helped me promote the gig. So it did was amazing. We only promoted the show. They give you a penthouse. No, 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 no. <laughs> they didn't <laughs> give me a penthouse. <laughs> That guy didn't give me a penthouse. Uh, what, what were your plans before lockdown? Like your plans for more shows, uh, tickets, selling out other shows. What were you doing when lockdown was announced? What, what were you, what were you I was, doing the next few months? I was, kick, I was kickstarting the one-man tour because I did Cape Town 29 Feb, uh, is, uh, Port Elizabeth, uh, South and March. So the next one was going to be 9 May in East London. And then uh, Hassel Adal, Ntata, Deben, then Jobek. That was the plan for the, for the comedy thing. And uh, have you My lost one-man show. Have you lost a lot of money? Had you saved money? Or you hadn't started spending money? So I know I already had adverts for Black Song on Comedy Central and... Um, Obviously, we, it, it was like three weeks before the first Black Song Day of the Year when lockdown happened. I had a golf day that was cancelled. I had some mm. club games uh, that were cancelled. Had you started spending money or you were, you, can, you were still able to just say, hey, I was like... Yeah. <laughs> just after I lost money in PE, lockdown. After I lost money in PE and then now... Yeah, there's no way to make it back. Like, relax, calm down, write more jokes. Have you? So have you there was nothing saved. Have you huh? managed to make some money um, now during lockdown? Are you doing some gigs online? Are you doing webinars and corporates and people trying to say, "See, I come, tell us jokes, uh, talk to your laptop and make us laugh," uh, <laughs> or you're gonna have to wait until we are we are out of lockdown? I I, I did one. I did one last month, uh, April. Yeah, I did one, the South and I think I only did one uh, in this lockdown. But now I'm just building the the following on my social media platforms. That's all I can do now. I'm sure once they see the numbers are growing, they'll, they'll, they'll start calling. But the plan yeah. is not to wait for the lockdown to make money. The plan is to see how much money I can make in the lockdown by, by using these platforms. No, we have to. We don't have a. We don't have a choice. Have you been to Swaziland yet? Yeah, I've been to Swaziland and Babani. And doing shows. No, I was booked there last year. I did Swaziland. No, dope, dope audience there. Uh, how are you handling the the language thing? Because obviously, I know the majority of you. Someone says I must put on a hat. I don't know what is lonely. <laughs> I how, remember, how you, yeah. I remember the 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 first six months when I arrived in Joburg. It was it was a problem for me. Like uh, even before I got here, I would call my the people that I knew were doing Corsa in uh, in Eastern Cape, and then people were like, "No, see ya, not in Joburg. Can't do Corsa in Joburg. I'm no longer doing Corsa. I'm doing English in Joburg." You know, so I was like, "Nah, man, I will try." Then when I get here, my plan was. Every lineup, 
if there has to be a Zulu comedian in front of me so that I, I gain my confidence, if the audience understands Zulu, then I'm free uh, to, 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 I know I'm going to do well once I know they get the Zulu, because Zulu and Kosa for me is the same thing. So that has been my technique uh, at shows. And also making sure that I don't use the deep Kosa words. Like I ask around, what is this in Zulu? What is this in, your, in that language? Because I know yeah. Eastern Cape is very far and Kosa can be very tricky. I made a mistake on the last uh, blacks only with certain jokes. I went very deep in Kosa with the, with the new material I did there. So yeah, I had to come back and, yeah, and, and, uh, and soften the Kosa I used there. And then when you go to Swaziland or where else outside South Africa have you performed? Botswana? Only Swaziland. So what language, how, how was the performance there? It was amazing because uh, uh, Swati, is, it's Nguni there. For me, it was easy because it's Nguni, like Swati, no, they, they, they enjoyed it. And I, I managed to mix it with some English. If other words I know, they will be, I'm, I'm not sure if they'll understand them. Then I put some English word there and then, yeah, give them some cursor here and there, you know. Because if it's a black audience, I get scared to speak English to black people. I can do an English set, but to black people, I just get intimidated and they are judgmental. So if I break the English, they will judge me as well. You understand? <laughs> if I, I kill the English, they will still judge me and think I'm trying to be better than them. So, <laughs> yeah, it's always a tricky situation with this English and, and us black people. So, yeah, I would like to do Botswana. Uh, I'll hook you up with someone in Botswana, but I mean, remember now, the lockdown is different in different countries, you know? Yeah. We have all these levels. We are going into level three. But you now we won't be back on stage in South Africa for many, many months, right? Yes. But I don't know if you've been following. Uh, Lesotho had come out of lockdown two, three weeks ago already. Ah. We went back to normal. Yeah. And remember when we were in the... Uh, two weeks social distancing before lockdown. Lesotho had already closed their borders, but they were not in lockdown. Okay. Now they've come out. But also, I don't know if anything has changed now. Apparently, they had only done about 30 tests. So they have mm. about zero cases, maybe four or five. So my plan is I'm going to start going in this. Spell out. <laughs> now you are sued to now. Not... <laughs> so my plan, my plan is I'm going to look for other countries that are opening up slowly, you know. Uh, Botswana also, I think, finished their 60-day lockdown. Uh, but mm -hmm. I mean, the population is small. I don't know what their numbers are. They recently had like their first or third case. Mm. You know, that said. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah. I think then what our plan should be, what we must look for. I'm going to look in Lesotho to Botswana. Uh, I know Swaziland is a bit hectic. Um, Tanzania, Kenya, as and other countries open. You know, America is already going yeah. back or trying to go back to normal. And we'll see what crowds they are kind of allowing for people to perform. So I think that's, the, that's really our only, um, you know, uh, our only solution because yeah for me, in South Africa I've I've written off probably till next year to do them to do a live show. <laughs> so now this corona I'm serious this corona is gonna expose us to reverse xenophobia. Yeah because now Zimbabwe I know Kahiso KG has got a show in Zim. Um, mm -hmm. I think in uh in August or September, and I'll go with him if if we are allowed to leave or if our borders to are leave. Open. Yeah. And then he was about to take me to Tanzania as well because uh, mm. he's been traveling and doing gigs in Tanzania. He's got a, a, a guy that he met and some gigs that they've been doing in Tanzania. Sure. Uh, you know, I've got my guys in Kenya. I've met some guys online that are in, uh, in Ghana and we're talking about shows. So definitely... 
one of the first things I'm doing is an African tour when we come out of uh, out of sure. Um, I want to invite uh, Sefat. Do you know DJ Sefat? I uh, know. I don't know. He's never met DJ Sefat this year. Maybe, maybe we might have seen each other on your shows. I think so. And it, when I did Free State's Funniest, where were you? It was me, Tips, uh, Samari. I was not uh, there. Makufe. Never has, been there. You've never done Makufe? Never. Are you serious? Never. You've never done Makufe, here. Yeah, you, last minute, you changed your mind. Last minute, I was excited going and then I saw on Facebook, everyone is already gone. Maybe I had booked you too late or had, I had booked too many, uh, too many acts. Too many acts, yeah. And there were too many acts even there, there yeah. yeah. So DJ Sfate has, has played from my first ever annual Christmas party in Kronstadt and mm -hmm. subsequently about maybe 14, 15 years in a row. Yeah. Final year, Christmas. Uh, DJ Sfate played at my gigs. So I want to I wanna invite him here. You'll meet him here. And then if your lady demands that you have to go, you'll tell us and we'll release you. you know? Okay, I know I'm here. I'm here. We never sleep here. Is she sleeping already? No, no one sleeps here. <laughs> what do Four o'clock. I don't <laughs> Four o'clock, we are still up. No one sleeps here. <laughs> 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 I've sent DJ Sfate a link to, to join us and uh, there was someone else here that said they wanted to join or say hi uh, I'm trying to look at the comments at the same time while I'm talking to you what's the first Sfate thing you to do? so I'm sure he knows me <laughs> <laughs> what's your what's the first thing you're going to do Sia when you First of all, we're going into level three, I guess. Yeah. What's the first thing you're gonna do on Monday when you enter level three? Uh, we we are emailing companies because now businesses are open. So level three is to take advantage of uh, the businesses that are open. Because uh, I think level three is gonna be a good level for what you are aiming to do in this house trying to get people, like alcohol is open, so it'll be easier to talk to even uh, alcohol beverages because every Monday I do that that special, that that, uh, that comedy thing I'm doing here on YouTube. So I want someone to come and sponsor that and be part of that situation there. So that whole week, our plan is, is to get someone, at least know that week we've got someone that we can, uh, that can support or, or power that situation we're trying to do there. Okay. No, let me uh, let me go in that uh, that is for the in the mix. That is for the thing. That is for the thing. And that is for the rapudumana. Say you are welcome. Yo! Hi, I can see. I can see. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Askis, good man. Askis. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, up, one of my best friends, one of the best DJs in this country, the number one DJ in the free state, Shakes Hardy, uh, uh, Finzo Hardy Vafetu. I think you all know the, the original, the legend. Quickly, let me tell how I met DJ's father. So when I was starting out, see, uh, when I moved to Joburg 20 years ago, I got to meet DJ yeah. Fred, I got to meet um, Glenn Lewis. And then I would travel to all of Glenn Lewis's gigs, right? And sometimes yeah. uh, fresh Glenn. I mean, probably one of my best times in Lesotho, I used to go there with DJ Fresh and and uh, Glenn Lewis. Uh, DJ Tio was still on Fresh show on YFM. So now I'm talking almost 16 years ago. Ne? Even before that, I remember because I still had my first car at the time. If Glenn Lewis had a gig mm. in Polokwane you know, on a Friday or on a weekend, I will say to him, Chief, 
where are you playing this weekend? Are Polokwan? Kishapa Kara. Before he even leaves Jovek, I'm already. <laughs> <laughs> and then they would say they have a gig in Bloemfontein. Brrr, I'm already on the highway going to wait <laughs> for, for their gig. And the, the first time I did that with Fresh and with Glenn. See, uh, it didn't matter who you were. If you were a DJ coming to the Free State, you were going to get mm. DJ Sparte as your opening act. And that's how I met um, DJ Sparte. And we had started uh, doing or thought, started thinking about doing my Christmas party around that time. So just thought I'd let my, my people here know who is this DJ Sparte, you know? This one. Thanks, Swar. Hey, Ted. It's a hearing lockdown. I know. <laughs> I know. Pay me. Pay me. This one. <laughs> <laughs> this, yeah, this man. This man has a pay me. Ever since he got here, he's been breaking connection. I don't know. I can't hear you properly. Is it? Is it? Yeah, DJ. Can you hear me here? Yeah, no, he keeps breaking a bit. Yeah, now I can hear you. Oh, okay, okay, my brother. Okay, my brother. No, sorry. Uh... People must know when we travel, when I do shows, it's either I'm with DJ Frankie, DJ Jaws, Amo, or I'm with DJ Sfat. Yeah. It's yeah. So wherever I am on, around the country, that's why he's saying we must go to Botswana. You know, I went to Kimbali, he was there. If I'm coming to Bloom, if I'm Wherever I want to go, this, are my this is my crew. <laughs> we did tax break. This tax break. Sorry, I still haven't. We got were cake. together, was in welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Live welcome. We did welcome tax break. Uh, Kimberly, tax break. Yeah, with the mayor yeah, of welcome oh that was born in tax break. <laughs> yeah, where are you smoking? <laughs> <laughs> Lockdown. The right. bomb is captured. What are you smoking? <laughs> I don't know. Is it allowed to smoke? Yeah. Can you smoke on YouTube? Can you smoke on YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> YouTube is international, so it's allowed. So are you going to allow your Dave Chappelle to... smoked on Netflix. Yeah, but they, you know how they pay him to smoke on Netflix. You know, we're trying to yeah. get YouTube to pay us. So are you going to let your kids go back to school? Well, luckily, my kids are not in the, the two grades, right? Seven grade 12 four. and grade 7. So we'll wait for the second round or third round. Yeah, so they don't I have mean, to go go back on the first. I, I encourage people to let other people's kids be, for example. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I agree. So, hence I'm saying, uh, we'll see next round. So. Um, how old are they now? Uh, my oldest son... Well, my firstborn is in grade time. eight Take now. Time, Take your time. Yeah, he's but 15. <laughs> can I teenager? Can I teenager, sir? Uh, he's, he's in grade, yeah, he's, he's, he's in grade eight now. So, and Yo. then my daughter is in grade three. Uh, the, the son is in grade? Grade eight. Yo, yo. Why? Why is cool? Hey, you see this Not one? a teenage. Yeah. I think it's a too big. He it's a too yeah. big. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to explain to some, of, uh, uh, to some of our viewers in case there's people from outside South Africa. So obviously during South Africa's lockdown, cigarettes were banned, alcohol was banned. Um, I think it's almost 70 days, 65 days now of our lockdown. <laughs> but we are they are about to open up for alcohol. But cigarettes, you still can't buy them. Just so that people understand why we're, we're going on about uh, cigarettes and 
Uh, someone was at the door. Did you close the show at the dome, sir? Yeah, I did. Yes, I closed the show at the dome. It was, yeah. Hey, it was yo. There were so many people there that a lot of people were sitting down, but some people were leaving because they wanted to make sure that they, they at the gate, they don't get any problems because coming in, there was so much traffic. So they were, they were chasing traffic. So it was very awkward to close and it was amazing at the same time. So I, yo, that was, that was too much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we did the dome black song the 14 years celebration. I was telling for and now the dome is my view, like I see the dome there now, like I can see it now. <laughs> <laughs> so the dome is your all the time. I'm like, I perform there all the time. <laughs> 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 yes, yes, yes. <laughs> no, that, that, show, uh, that show was just... Um, it was amazing, yeah. About 10,000 people came to that show. And uh, obviously the biggest... Yeah. Thing did, like three times uh, the number of people we normally have at a Black Song show. So I, 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 I always say to people, the first time a comedian fills up a stadium in South Africa, it's going to be in a vernacular comedy show and that mm. day is gonna come soon we have to do it you know? um i know there's a stadium in paris that i'm gonna check if we can use uh for our first comedy show as fact yeah yeah uh, <laughs> i remember you were showing us some of your alcohol stock and i know you're not drinking are you <laughs> were you one of the take it or leave it type of people <laughs> No, so <laughs> remember, I used to entertain, me and my wife and I used to entertain people. I once had, I don't know if it was my birthday or housewarming, we once had 100 people in our house and my wife catered for everyone by herself. All her friends did, one bought leg or the, 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 the hot chicken. Uh, someone else helped her peel the food, peel the vegetables. And then she wouldn't let anyone else do anything else. So I used to mm. buy a lot of alcohol. Né? But I would go to Macro and buy boxes of champagne, boxes of this. So I still have, I mean, I don't drink. I still have, yes, I swear, I've got Johnny Walker, 18 year old, that I've had for 10 years. And like the Glen Fiddich, 18. Oh. Green Label, that are 15 years old, but I've had them for like 8, 10 years. And one day, I guess, I'll, I'll auction these things, you know. I'll, I'll auction oh. but I, I, I wouldn't want to take the chance. Imagine you go through all this trouble, you're behaving yourself, Sia, you're staying home, you're observing lockdown, you're not cheating on anyone, mm. and then boom, you get arrested mm. for trying to sell <laughs> a bottle of Johnny Walk. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're going to go to jail. Remember, the prisoners are coming out. They're being released. No? Yeah. They, they argued they are being infected by prison orders, and the Bonade already locked down. That's why government is releasing about 27,000 prisoners. But at the same time, mm. they are arresting other people for jogging, for breaking lockdown rules, for walking dogs, for not observing mm. uh, lockdown protocol. So it's a swim swap, basically. We're, we're just. <laughs> yeah, man. The criminals are coming out and normal people are going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> we are all criminals now. We are, <laughs> we are all criminals. I see champagne, uh, DJ's father's background. Take it or leave it, Price. <laughs> That's champagne. champagne. Is that a champagne bucket? <laughs> <laughs> Svate, you in lockdown with your with your wife and kids. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, my and wife. And, yeah. My wife and kids have been on lockdown level five, and they're still on level five. It's only me who's on level one. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Essential CVs, what? So I have I've had a permit ne, throughout lockdown, but my yeah. wife found out at the end of, <laughs> <laughs> of level five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But all this time, I've had a, I've had a permit. The permit. All I do, all I do, is buy bread. Now I'm buying bread and wood. Replace peanut butter and jam. That's all I've been doing this entire life. Yeah. You know, everybody had plans of I'm gonna do this. I'm going to do that. I'm gonna do this. Hey, next thing I knew, bro, the five weeks was over. <laughs> Did you? <understand? laughs> <laughs> Did you have big plans going to <laughs> lockdowns? What? Eh? Did you have big plans going into lockdown? Yeah, well, I had a couple of plans, uh, but obviously uh, lockdown happened, and I had to then put them on ice. Uh, some of the gigs, some personal issues that I had to do, uh, some family matters as well. So I had to put hmm. all those uh, onto ice. Uh, of course, one of the plans was to attend the Black Songly as, as always, uh, the first yeah, of, of the year, and I, we couldn't, you know. Um, so that was one trip that I had to cancel to Josie from Bloom. Yes, yes that killed me. Yo, gents, I don't yeah. even want to talk about it. Yeah. No, that was a so, killer. Yeah. I was in denial, you know. I, 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 in my <laughs> head, I thought, ah, man. This can still happen. This can still ish. And ah. then we went into the social distancing two weeks. It was I, close, I, eh? I know my age it was, close. was, mm. close, was three weeks. Mm. What? It was close. Yes, sir. Mm. I then did. For me, man, you know, I think I had a shit 2018, I had a cack 2019, and I thought nothing will get worse. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, towards the end of um, 2019 I directed two movies one in October one November, December and then I put Sia in one of those movies you know that movie yeah. is supposed to come out October at the cinemas the first one is supposed to come out in June, Father's Day that's not going to happen the one with Sia was supposed to come out in October I don't think cinemas will be open by then. So mm. for me, yeah. you know, directing the two movies, went to New York, oh, was, performed, yeah. performed in New York at Charlie Theron's yeah. function, came back, directed the second movie. I, December, January, Black Song, April, then I'm going back to New York, I'm going to LA. Corona, <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Corona <laughs> is nonsense, so far. but yeah. what the, what's the first thing is does it even make any difference to you when we go into level three or when we keep moving stages? Well, look, personally, uh, it doesn't make any difference, but from an entertainment point of view, it will. Uh, yeah, you know, I, yeah, you know, I have two lives, so yeah. <laughs> the, the one life is an essential service life which really does it doesn't really matter whether i'm at level one or five i still have to do what i do uh, yeah. so that people can wash their hands you know yeah um but then from an entertainment point of view it will really mean a lot as an artist as well for fellow artists to, to come back and do what they are, they are, they are, they are supposed to be doing, uh, which is entertaining the masses out there. I can imagine, I mean, for for my fellow guys that are doing this um, uh, full time, you know, yeah. uh, it, it's really a killer uh, in the pocket, you know. So uh, we would really hope that we rush back to level one so that at least we can gig, even if it's... Um, uh, minimal numbers. Yeah, it's still okay. We'll, Mara, we'll it's nicer for it. DJs. It's just the what? camera and the decks for us yeah. comedians, no audience. We'll, we'll it's sad, man. Here, we'll put tapes for social distancing so that we cluster people to <laughs> to dance, you know. So, so yeah, I I feel for for the guys. 
um, and like I'm saying, I, I tried to do industry. something with just Buddha live. I did yeah. two minutes because <laughs> I can't do this thing for the camera. There's so many lights and cameras. <laughs> the DJs are having fun, man. And they are trending. The shims are the new DJs part. They like, yeah. you just did a camera and like, yo, what a nice set. Everyone, yo, he killed it. He killed it. Hey, for us, <laughs> when was the last time we heard the word he killed it? And you don't know whether sponsors. you killed it or not. And they have sponsors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, they the virtual parties, everything. parties are the in thing now. But you see, the saddest part of it here is that not everyone is making money out of it. Right? So, mm. I mean, there's so many DJs out there. I mean, we, we always need to think about up-and-coming DJs that are even getting paid 200 bucks at, at a tavern. Well, you. Uh, you see, so they can't even yeah. do gigs and stuff so it, it is not only about uh the likes of shimza and those that can have visual parties that are sponsored and at least they can get something out of it uh i'm usually thinking of the guys that are up, up and coming you know that are like i like i just made a, an example with somebody that's getting even a hundred bucks or 200 bucks at a tavern uh, as, as an up and coming dj because that's that's how we all started you know yeah you need to start somewhere. Yeah. Swat, are people in Bluefontaine observing lockdown? Well, um, the, I'd say it's looking at the numbers uh, in Bloom. Uh, we are, I think, now standing at about 245 cases. Uh, in town, it's better. In the township, I think it's just like any other township in, in South Africa where mm. people even in lockdown level five you'd swear that it's december you know yeah. i think now it's better ever since we've moved on level four and three that people are now starting to understand that uh putting of facial mask is an essential thing and it's good for us to do that and the all also the issue of sanitizing becomes now uh, a, a, an important thing to do. Uh, yeah. I, I always thought we're gonna forget this sanitizing thing and mask <laughs> after alcohol. When people yeah, are yeah, drunk, yeah. the soldiers and the police are gonna be busy. Yeah, but all in all, Dave, I, I, I think we are there and there. You know, I, yeah. I wouldn't really say based on our numbers, two hundred and forty-five in the free state, which hundred and something are from Bloom, and obviously we know. Most of those cases were because of that one incident of that church that yeah. happened where almost uh, uh, nearly 100 people were, were infected. And mostly, if we look at the issues of recoveries, out of 245, I think we are standing at around about 120 recoveries, which is good. So yeah. we have less than 100 active, life, uh, active cases in Bloom, which really is yeah. not that bad. Yeah, I mean, I thought when I saw the statistics, you know, and and I, I I even thought of actually now is a better time to be in the free state, you know. Yeah. Unless my parents are still in the free state. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my, my grandmother, my grandmother, turned ninety years old in March. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And you couldn't oh, celebrate. God. And. Uh, are you guys are like it's good for you? It's not a good time to be in Eastern Cape right now. Yeah, I'd rather be here in Chobe. But the numbers west, are spreading. Uh, east or West. <laughs> same, same WhatsApp group. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of bad. Thanks for your time. Thanks for joining us. No, Let's thanks. Hope thanks, we thanks. Can get together soon. And uh, I'm hoping the golf uh, is opening on Monday. I know yeah. there, some sort of a road trip. Yeah, uh, yeah. So we'll see. Maybe, maybe Lesu to Kapa Botswana. Oh, Botswana, sir. Yeah. So, Arabone, mm. Arabone. See, I don't go yeah, away. No. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm trying to get. Uh, I think. Tawani, invite, because you're going to be a Hanyan, you know. Yeah, Tawani sure. is in the mix. I'm trying to add him. No, no that is. Tawani. 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 Tawani
we'll do that. We'll do that, sir. Thanks, gents. Hey, Tara. Hola. Capsha. Al Crasparte. Hola, hola, Sia. Hola, Hutman Laka. Sia, what? So, besides uh, calling businesses and whatever, what else do you think you want to do as soon as lockdown or we go into level three? Do you miss junk food? Are you a big fan of junk food? Uh, I eat everything. I'm not. I'm a big fan of food, so we eat everything. We stay next to a butcher, so uh, in terms of gaining weight now, yeah, we we're not missing anything. In fact, my lady misses ribs. She misses ribs. She likes ribs, uh, tears and stuff. Yeah, but myself, anything. Yeah. But I'm gonna do the moment after this thing. I'm gonna shoot. I want to shoot my everything now. You know. If I get yeah. like you, invest on equipment, cameras, and stuff like that. Shoot everything after this thing. No, look, I mean, you know, for me, I respect phones now more than ever, right? Mm. Uh, obviously, laptops are convenient as well. When you are doing this, you don't have to be holding a phone. or You can record the interviews to your laptop. You can edit, stuff like that. But I don't want you to waste money on fancy cameras and all that nonsense. I've got cameras, you know, worth more than a million rand worth of equipment. It's just sitting there. I mean, I used mm. all of it obviously for all my movies. Some of it, if I had a crew, maybe I would use it. We shot David Cow's house using the same equipment. But right now, because cameras and phones are developing so quick, if you buy mm. a camera today, tomorrow, it's already old. You know, six months later, there's yeah. already a new version, just like phones. So, but I, like I said to you, I admire how you've turned around from when I used to struggle to even find or tag you on my Twitter when we have shows. <laughs> I, if I go to my Instagram now and I go into my profile, I'm, I find you there or you're, you're, you're going to come up on my timeline, you know, mm. without fail. Every single time, if I go to my instagram you are on my on my timeline and that's a good thing and that means you're always posting that's why your following is also growing you know yes do you do you do you have uh, other comedians that talk to you about it or that have asked you are you working on it uh is there a difference uh, are other people noticing any change uh no not that i know of because Ever since this lockdown has started, um, uh, it's been isolation, like proper, proper isolation from everyone. So, like, I know a lot of comedians are doing all these live interviews. I haven't been doing a lot of them because me and my lady here, that's all we've been doing is just me and my lady here. I think you are the third comedian to be in touch with me uh, ever since this lockdown has started. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just talking to a lot of other comedians a lot. No, Ash, I'm a loner. I don't know if you notice. I'm a loner. I'm a, I'm a person who stays in his own shell a lot. So, uh, yeah. I'm, uh, I always talk to people when I see them. Uh, you know, when I, I once saw you at a comedy club, and then I met, I think, four or five other you are the you. only one who tells a story and the last time you introduced me on stage uh, at Black's only uh, I was almost in tears because it, I don't know that night like it felt real when you said it is it yeah it felt real yo and is it stories that you laugh at now when you look back? Ah, well, hey, I don't know. And uh, yeah, sometimes they hate these things because all my life in comedy, I've always been uh, doing things alone, you yeah. know, uh, being an outsider. All ever since I've started doing comedy. So when I moved to Joburg, I was the only gateway for most comedians at home uh, to yeah. come to, to Joburg. Since no one has ever given me a chance, I was always open to like, no, come, come through. So in my bedroom, we had like 
four comedians. Like it was a poster, it was a lineup. We could have toured with that uh, with that, with those comedians in that room because the, everyone is funny in that room. So yeah, when I think about those things, yes, I don't know. Like the uh, it's very deep. It's very deep. No, those are good stories to tell. You know, your life is a. You is a are the only one that even mentions those things. You are the only one. I think because people don't, you know, when people say "How are you," and you just say mm. "I'm fine, thanks," mm. people don't think about the meaning of "How are you." Mm. Consciously in my head, I'm always thinking about it. So, because I've always been fine, I'm unable to. If you said to me, "How are you?" I'm gonna say mm. to you, "Ah, Joe, it's shit. I lost money. Black Song was cancelled. The golf day was cancelled." Da, da, mm. da, but it's nice being with family. It's nice being with my wife and kids. That because that's how mm. I am. But because I've always been the guy, I'm fine. I'm fine because everything was fine. Yeah, you understand. So for yes. me, it matters if I say to you, "Sia, how are you?" Or if mm. I say to you, "Hey man, quickly come here or let's shoot this, this," and then you're like, "Hey, brother, I stay far. This is where I'm staying. I'm gonna have to take this taxi. Then I must." Taxi five for this much. So I mean, I listen. That's why I'm I'm one of the few people that know, or that would know, you know, even like such a small because I I didn't have to ask those guys, who are you? Where do you come from? Because you know, the yeah, comedians. I didn't even know who they are. But I was intrigued. Or already, you are living in a one room, you know. Which these days it it's it's not enough even for one person, you know. But mm. you have. This, guys and friends that are trying to also achieve some things in their life. And mm. you're still willing to say to them, gents, this is all I have. You can come and share with me. You mm. know? And still take them to your gigs. Try and get them stage time. Because I met most of them through you. And mm. some of them are put on my shows in, in Cape Town, you know. Some of them yeah. have been on my shows here in, in, in Joburg and I wouldn't have put them on if I if I didn't know. Tabangi ER is, is, is in the curtains there somewhere. I saw, I saw he was doing this. I he saw. Popo curtains. Ladies and gentlemen, another one of my favorite comedians has his own show, uh, ER What What comedy show. He's right here. I asked him to get out of bed. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Standing ovation. <laughs> you can hear me. I can hear you now. Oh, okay. I can. You know, Tabang ER is one of the people. He posted a picture on Instagram, and at first I did not recognize him because <laughs> he's grown a beard. His hair has grown and he wasn't like wearing a hair. And I was like, hey man, this is Tawang. <laughs> hey man, how's lockdown? Yeah, man, know you also have another, another job. That's an essential service. Yeah, yeah. No, but so far, yeah, we, we're still hanging in there. It's not easy, but uh, especially as a performer, you you just wonder where now. When is it going to end? When are we going to go back on stage? When are we going to fill up venues and get stress? <laughs> but, uh, it's just one of, those that you, one of those things we don't have control uh, over. Yeah, when when we spoke, uh, you sent me a message because the only time you could get a venue for your next ER What What show was the same day I had my Black Song Comedy show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had you started uh, spending money marketing the show? Yeah, my booth was already out. Uh, I gave a change game, Bugile Unisa for, I booked for the 16 May. Yeah. And uh, I registered with the marketing, but unfortunately. Yes, sir. Yeah. And, and uh, I was on the lineup. I was oh, on yeah. the lineup. You must pay for cancelling fee. Cancelling yeah. fee, my man. <laughs> I, I had to 
see less than two lead. Tatum Konzo was also in the lineup. Like, yeah, it was a fire lineup. And uh, so now everything is cancelled. I tried, I also tried to 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 claim that to relief fund something. Uh huh. Guy, I'm still waiting. Yes, yes. What's the are you are you locked down in uh, Pretoria? Yeah, I'm in Pretoria. And uh, how old is your because you have a new baby as well, right? No, my baby's two years, two years old. Two years now. Um, ah, yeah, she turned new. She turned two in April, so she she deserves a, a handsome younger brother, so I must start waking now. Ay, 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 ay. That's my son's girlfriend. Eh? That's my son's girlfriend. She's two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I <must have> another <laughs> one. <laughs> no, no, man. Sorry, I got you out of bed, but are you available to come back tomorrow night, 10 p.m., for another uh, live broadcast here on YouTube? Yeah, or you no have problem. plans? You have nah. plans tomorrow now. <laughs> it's lockdown. lockdown. <laughs> Everyone is on lockdown. I don't know if plan it. I will see you or during the day. You can do it around 3 p.m. No worry. I have an appointment at 10 p.m. <laughs> I don't know if people uh, will remember or recognize or are aware. Uh, there's a movie I did uh, called Sinatra. Oh yeah. On, uh, yeah. On, uh, on, <laughs> on, on Magic, she played the lead in, right? But we'll talk about all that stuff tomorrow. Um, oh yeah. So I've been, so I've been jogging. Of... I've been jogging, trying to shed some weight, and because with me, there's more fun in building muscle than maintaining. So I wanted to lose some body weight, get a slender, and then start building from scratch after lockdown. Hey, but uh, it's tough. I was checking my weight. I only lost about 2 kg. I'm not in the weight control. Now I have them, but uh, the body, the weight, like the muscles and everything. I was trying to to become get a slender and then start building from scratch oh. after the lockdown. But it's yes, not sir. easy. When I'm do. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen Dude's yeah. arm? Dude's arm is this big. <laughs> yeah, I'm Dude. Yeah, that's him too. Dude's <laughs> arm is bigger than his ass. Yeah, dude. I remember. I remember a comedian back in the day once said, uh, "A good-looking guy who's buff will never be fun." But him do and Tabang Er have proved that <laughs> statement got wrong. <laughs> I never knew I'd see a uh, good looking buff people with six pack being funny like that. Yo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know, even Kevin no. Hart, after even Kevin Hart, after his car accident, he says if his body was not built the way he is, he may have mm. not been able to walk after that. Oh, so yeah, yeah no. you and no. Top Nonson. Must start going to gym. <laughs> Who must go to gym? Yeah, Titi Pasha must go to gym. Yeah, Titi Pasha <laughs> is rich. Titi Pasha, two weeks, it can be okay. Hey, for <laughs> us, we must start kill them, Kaba, and everything. No, Tavan, yes. come back no. tomorrow night, 10 p.m. We'll be live right here again tomorrow night. Oh, yes. No, I'll see you tomorrow. No, no stress, yeah. in fact. Shabs. I will see you, man. You will see you in the world. Shabs. No, you should be left for us to stay. Because when there's three people here, there's nothing happening. The sounds keep breaking, but on her phone, everything is well. Is it? Yeah. But what's the story behind the head? Uh, well, it's my insecurity about my hair because since I was young, it starts here in the far, far away from the forehead. So, yeah, yeah no, same, same, so same. It, it has been my uh, my insecurity, so hence the head. 
I've been wearing caps since I was young. What's your your parents are, are still in uh, in Tanzania? No, they're in Port Elizabeth. The oh, Tanzania house, uh, my mother's house, is uh, the, it's it's rented out. Oh, is it? Yeah. But you grew up in London, when? Yeah, I was. I, I, am I what? You grew up in East London. Yeah, I grew up until I was uh, 15 when they bought that house in PE. Then I was. Uh, then I went to PE. Then it's back mm -hmm. and forth, East London and PE. Have you done a show yet in your hometown where you come from? East London. Yeah. No. Yeah, in the I did. Yeah, you're in the township. I did the show in this other club. I thought we were going to do it inside the club. And then the owner was like, no, let's do it outside. We did this, yo, this picnic thing. And we had to alert people last minute that they must bring their camp chairs and whatnot. The people of Tanzania, they came to the show dressed nice and stuff, and then they set it down, but like on the ground, and it was raining, and those people, they, they, yo, it was a disaster for me, for them. It was a show and a half. I was so shocked. So, in Tanzania, we don't have venues. We don't have, even that the pubs are just meant for alcohol, not for entertainment or live entertainment. So it's very difficult to find a place to do. There is no theater. All the halls are vandalized. So someone rather takes it to, to town. What do you miss the most? Um, I know we spoke about food. Uh, you know, people, cities. Uh, I know you're with your woman, so it's not so bad. You know, a lot of people out there are dying of salt, right? Some people yes, are locked exactly. on their own. Hey. Uh, it's you know, and surprise, it's you'll be surprised who's locked down on their own, you know. Even <laughs> Donald, uh, our friend Donald, uh, uh, Donald, <laughs> yeah, Donald has been, has been in, 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 uh, in lockdown by himself. Uh, I spoke to Aubrey, Poe, actor Aubrey, um, nah. he's also been locked down by himself. I found out there's quite a lot of people that have been uh, in lockdown by themselves. I'm sure they have permits. Ah. They are in and out of lockdown. <laughs> Let me see if I can get someone else. Uh, who are your favorite comedians in South Africa? Uh, South Africa, I love Skumba always. You know, I love Skumba. Uh, you, you are one of them. You, you've been doing comedy for more than 20 years. And you are still doing it uh, as if you started yesterday, like what you did at Parkers. Uh, I always tell uh, the the comedians in my in my level, like you know, the people that we thought were were big and successful and stuff like that. Like the way they are so humble, you think like they they started with you, like you now, like you being you now. Yeah, like it's like we started comedy at the same time. The way you are working hard. And then the, another one is Mashabel, another humble one. You know, uh, works hard, uh, has many streams of income when it comes to, to hustling. So it's people that I learn for on how to, 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 to take this as a business. Because four years when I moved to Joburg, I only thought being funny will just pay the bills. But learning from you guys that, no, you need to have a lot of things. Like anyone can be funny. There are a lot of people in the township who are funny and they are just there being funny in the township. So what makes a difference between a stand-up comedian and someone who's funny in the township or, or anyone who's funny is the fact that you are humble, you know your story, you know. So yeah, it's people that I learned from you, Kumba and Mashabel. No, that's good, man. Would you consider doing other things outside stand-up comedy or what business, if you can, just take your money, put some money away or in a business. What would you consider doing? Uh, one, the plan is to go back to Eastern Cape. I uh, have fa a farm. I want cows. I want to make, I love yogurt. So I want to make yogurt and cheese. Uh, I just want to have to make a dairy, manufacture dairy, product, dairy products. Yeah. 
That is my so plan. You, will you have someone uh, doing all that for you or are you going to go now and, and live on a farm? No, no, not now. Not now. When when the age is when the age is uh, suitable to go there. But now, yeah, it would be nice to have uh, some people to handle that for me. Yeah, no, you know, uh, I don't know if people know, but I've got cows somewhere. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you are living my dream, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh yeah so uh, you are know, you not could... proud are you not proud when you look at your cows how do you feel when you look at your your livestock remember i told you like in december in eastern cape a cow ranges from 15000 to 20 20000 yes sir no one I mean, cow I, yeah i mean i bought mine at an auction and they were like 13.9 at an auction Yo. so yeah, so it's it's but it's it's I, I don't see them a lot, but I miss them like proper like yeah. I I I wanna see them, you know. Um yes. I some have had the Madinya and the calf and some were calves when, when I got them and now they're bigger. Uh wow. it's not a lot, but, you know, they're they're there. And I'll definitely consider um just having a farm or at least going to a farm now and then and just get out of town, you know, get out of Joburg mm. um, and, and see how things are. How old is your child now? Turning three in October. Is it? Yeah, and that's why I said that uh, 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 Tabagi Ar's daughter oh. is the girlfriend. Um, <laughs> yeah. Now, I remember when he was born and you had to travel between Joburg, Cape Town, Eastern Cape, Cape Town. Joburg. I had to, I had to borrow a thousand rand from Skumba. Uh, the ladies, uh, my ladies' water broke on a Saturday, and then Sunday no bed, Monday no bed, Tuesday I'm um, yo I went crazy. I was like no, I borrowed money, took a bus, then I arrived in Cape Town on uh, Thursday morning, and then he was born here at around. On Thursday, five o'clock late, when I arrived at twelve, so the nick the nigga was waiting for me. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been doing comedy now? Uh June fourteen. It will be my thirteenth year. June 13th. fourteen is my thirteenth thirteenth anniversary. And uh, before that, what did you do? Were you working? Yeah. Uh, before that, I graduated 2006. So I was just out of college, 2006, okay. look, looking for work. And then I found comedy 2007. Where, where were you working? Uh, I've worked everywhere, like macro. I've dug the trenches by the road contract work. Uh, I've managed Cash Crusaders. Uh, yeah, Cash Crusaders was my last job. 2010, I ripped my seat, my CV apart, and said, "No, I'm gonna do comedy." What? When? If you think if comedy didn't work out, what would you be doing? Or if let's say now, but Corona is gonna go for two years, and we have to go find full time jobs, you and I, where are you gonna go and apply for a job? Radio. Okay, to be a DJ. Yeah, because I studied radio and television and Is filmmaking. It? Yeah, I'm a graduate. I did audiovisual production. Is that where you met your wife, girlfriend, baby mama? Ah, uh, she graduated two years ago. I graduated 2006. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ten. I'm nine years older. I'm nine years older. When I was graduating, she was in crutch. <laughs> <laughs> but did she tell you the same thing? Yeah, she, she, she did the same thing. She did uh, filmmaking. Where did you study? In the Eastern Cape or in Cape Town? 
I did East Hours in Eastern Cape. Cape Town was just like Joburg. I went there to look for work because there's no work for radio and TV and TV in Eastern Cape. So uh, my only option was Cape Town because I was always scared of coming to Joburg. Like I say it in a joke, like it was really true because everyone that I know from Eastern Cape that came to Joburg uh, to hustle, they came back... Uh, it's either dying from something or like they came back like with nothing. So my my, my vision of Joburg was never yeah or uh, positive. Um, do you still have one man shows that you haven't released that people that you plan on releasing? I have a I have a documentary. I have a documentary, but the one man shows that I had already up on. Uh, on YouTube, and uh, I'm worried about the quality when it comes to them. So that's why after this th this lockdown, first thing I'm gonna do is to correct uh, all those mistakes and start shooting prop. You know, there's someone Akosu Abuitumelo uh, Tseleng. I'm trying to see if she wants to join us. So I know there was someone else earlier who who wanted to join, but I'm trying to. Hello, Abuitumelo. But she also said she wants to be uh, in one of my movies. So maybe she's an actress, you know? Yeah. So I have to find a way to send her a link. Um, hey. It's fine. I'll do it. Uh, actually, okay. I know how I can do it. Uh, give me your email address first. Yeah. Uh, we do Melo is an actress. It's not easy that thing to be on a set the whole day. <laughs> hey, I thought acting was easy. How hey, many movies when someone says I want to be an actor, eh? how many movies have you done with me? Uh, we've done the one I'm Tumsani, we've done the one I was a security just now, uh, and then uh, Lee Tola takes three. Send me your, type your email address here. I'll send you a link to join us. Uh, maybe Buitumelo might just be the next big thing. You never know. You see? Yeah. You never know. Do you believe everything yeah. happens for a reason here? Or you just think... I do. Everybody makes their bed and they must sleep in it. I Exactly. Exactly, I do. But at the same time, when I get angry, I feel like there are people who are not supposed to meet as people, but we ended up meeting them. Because there's a saying that says every person you meet has a message for you, good or bad. There's a message. Some people didn't leave anything. Like, you try to find the message, there's nothing. Then yeah. that's when I, I decide, like, some people were never supposed to meet. <laughs> <laughs> but once you've met, you've met. It has to be for a reason. <laughs> yeah, now it's 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 hard to find the reason. Like, why did I meet that person? Like, you know, even when you had a bad, bad relationship with someone, at least you can take something, okay. Yeah, that that person was bad, they screwed me over. I've learned a lesson. That was the message. Some people they just know you, you just don't understand what was happening there. <laughs> would you allow your would you allow your child or kids to go into the comedy industry or to become stand up comedians if they say to you they want to be would you would you let them go in this industry I would do that I mean even now lockdown has taught me that thing like hey uh, support system is everything you know support system is everything I didn't have any support system uh, when I started this thing, when I, uh, since I started doing comedy, so now to have a lady in my life that is uh, is doing everything, it, and I'm even learning to 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 be supported. Sometimes I get angry because I'm not used to uh, to being with people like you know on my corner. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I think yeah, I will support everything that he wants to do it as long as it's not gonna hurt anyone. Yeah. As long as it's going to make him happy. 
And uh, do you have a, uh, 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 maybe we touched on it a little bit. Uh, so I know when I started out, I mean, even now, any black child who wants to be a comedian or black person, they ask me if I can help them, mm. right? Do you have people that, for them, they look like you are their only hope? You are so <laughs> Brasilia, please. Hey, Brasilia, DM, please. Hey, watch my thing. Hey, can I please work for you? Come and do this. Are you having that happening with you? I'm, ha I'm having it a lot now in my inbox. is like, uh, other people are referring other ones like yo there's this boy is funny here see ya uh, book me on your shows i'm a new comedian they send me clips i i have all the time in the world even before long lockdown i i always have time and uh, i always reply to them you know and and send them to to other people like if someone is in cape town i'll send them to Colping. if someone is in eastern cape i send them to to lupelo if someone is in Joburg. I'll ask them which language do you speak. I'll send them to, if it's Bedi, I'll send them to Chomia Chesu. I'll send them to people that are close to me. People yeah. that are good enough for their, for their come up, for starting up, for starting out. Because they just rush straight. Someone from uh, Nels Prait, this boy was stalking me and then I was like, no, I'll give you someone's number. And then his father called, like, no, I will pay you. Just get my son to Mzansi comedy night. I'm like, no, it doesn't work like that. Yeah, man. Yeah, so yeah, people, yo, they, they think it's easy. It's not. That's why I was... Because I did that as well when I was starting out. I, I used to inbox you on Facebook, uh, everyone. Uh, everyone. Kumba, everyone. Because I thought it was, it was easy. So I understand because I made the same mistake when I was starting out. So that's why I replied to all the messages. So that they can get the reality first and understand. No, man. Well done, Sia. I'm, I'm excited to see you where you are now. I know where you come from. And I know definitely where you can go, you know. So I'm happy and I'm, I'm excited that you have taken your own... Uh, you've taken charge of your own destiny, you know? Thank you. You are not sitting around hoping someone's going to come and rescue you. Because for now, mm. as much as I had so much support and manager and, you know, my manager, Roddy Queen, who paid for Black Somni to even start, you know? Mm. Um, and it wouldn't have happened without him. But even with that, I still wanted to make movies. I still wanted to write. I started my own company, my own production company. I produced other comedians, managed other comedians. So I'm glad also you are not sitting there waiting and hoping, you know? Yes, yes. No, thank you, Khrotman. Thank you, Khrotman. Before I let you go, Siane, there's a Khrotman here. I don't know when, when you last saw him. Uh, I haven't sure. seen him, now, but uh, I'll see him now. You guys will see him now. I think a lot of people okay. here will recognize him. He's just going to say, what's up? We're going to wrap this thing up. And then we'll make time to talk to him again. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the one and only, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Chris Mappan! <laughs> Yo, he gained weight. Yeah. <laughs> and the beard. Yes, sis. Krutman. Hey, bro. Me, I don't, get I don't get affected by lockdowns. <laughs> I still Yo, ah, you are highly affected. Yes, <laughs> sir, good man. Hi, uh, welcome, Chris Mopani, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to think if there are people here who don't know Chris Mopani. Chris Mopani was in the first movie I ever made, Taxi Ride. I think Taxi Ride 10, 7 or 8 years old uh, this year. The most repeated, probably the most watched movie on Zant's Magic. The most watched. And Chris Mapani was the steering in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I, wrote, I, wrote, I, wrote, I, wrote, I wrote my part as a steering. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but Chris, I just literally wanted you to say what's up. Uh, when can you join us on my live YouTube, uh, David Gow Live? 
YouTube, how Facebook. Often, how, when, 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 how often do you do the shows? Uh, I prefer night times, 11 p 10 p.m. You can do it every night. You can just level it and make a difference. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like it's not like comedy yeah. clubs. Remember, remember, we used to have comedy clubs uh, every Thursday, and then they would move to last Thursday of the month. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. No. Let's let's uh let's um I have I have a class tomorrow. Let's do let's do Sunday. Yeah. No, we can do Sunday evening. Yeah. So tomorrow night, ladies and gentlemen, Suhail Esa Tabang Er, uh, Sunday night, 10 p.m. Mr. Chris Mapan. Maybe we'll hook up uh, Tapelo Tips shampoo nizer as well for Sunday. You should, you should, you should do this when you go back and do live shows. Uh, call a comedian to the show and then book them for the next show. That's what they do. You call them on stage, then you're like, hey, "When can you do this show?" <laughs> and they're like, oh. "And then you're like, okay, come back." <laughs> and then you have to get in the bus and go back to Mdanzani. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, Chris, I knew you it. it's gonna come for me. <laughs> sure, boy. 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 Sure, Oh, I know Brasia, my brother. Uh, you must you must thank your lady for me. Um yes. how how do you introduce her? Because it's been confusing for me the whole night. Ne? Uh you know when pe- for me people are either girlfriend or maybe fiance at some stage, or some will say this is um um mama kam bane bane baby mama yeah uh, how how do you introduce uh your woman your lady girlfriend baby mama how do you do you say hey Hortman, this is my lady i think you said to me this is my lady when i when <laughs> <laughs> yeah because she's way past girlfriend <laughs> she's way past girlfriend it seems like girlfriend is a is a is a very stupid uh description of this situation we are in so i it's either lady or baby mama but now i stop calling her baby mama introducing her as baby mama because people assume that you are no longer together you are because most people are no longer together with their baby mama so i stopped so now it's late because i owe her the ring so it, it i know lady is close to wife so i rather call her my lady than my uh I've been watching a lot of Games of Thrones. So, like, <laughs> my lady, it's a, it's a sign of respect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, until I, I, I'm able to say my wife, my lady is the, is, is the best I can do now. No, well done, Sia. Well done. No, thank you, Khutman. No, we'll check in again. We'll talk again. Um, guys, go follow Sia uh, on his YouTube channel, Sia Vision. Uh, follow him on his social media, uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Support him. Understand this is the only way or at least uh, the most immediate next way we can make money right now. All our shows are cancelled. Um, so, some, some of the comedians don't have other streams of income. So just a little you coming here tonight for me means a lot um just coming and watching live on youtube on facebook uh and people coming back again and watching these videos uh so thank you very much for tonight guys uh i think we'll keep this format you know come here 10 p.m talk until 11 uh, 11 30 p.m pop in with some guests surprise guests here and there so tomorrow night suhail esa tabangi r I don't know who else will pop in. Sunday night, uh, we'll talk to Chris Mapani, find out what he's been up to. And then, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll find all these guys. We'll find all these comedians. And we'll tell our stories, you know, because that's all we can do for now. Just tell our stories. Thanks for coming, guys. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, good man. 
Ini vale le le broadcast, guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Uh, David Gao YouTube channel. Press the notification button so you know when I'm posting. I post every single day on my YouTube channel. I'll post uh, more stand-up comedy. I'll post a uh, new season of David Gao's house. And I'll keep doing this, talking to my comedian friends from all over the world. Uh, thanks for coming today. Uh, send me messages uh, if you guys want me to invite you because it's tricky when I'm already doing the chat to forward the invite. If you guys want to send me your numbers, uh, you can send me a message with your numbers. You don't have to put them in the public chat. Um, and don't do it now because I'm going to wrap up the chat now. So send me a message or whatever, Facebook message or DM or whatever. Send me your number if you want me to interview you while we are talking to other people. Then I can send you the invite directly on your phone. Uh, or you can even send me your email address. So thanks so much. And uh, I'm loving this because I even recognize some of the names. I know people that come back almost every live that I do, whether it's Instagram or Facebook or YouTube. And I'm starting to recognize the name. And, and it's it's amazing. It's a beautiful thing to witness, you know. And eventually, obviously, you guys will be front row uh, when we go back to normality and we start doing shows again. Thanks for your support, guys. Uh, I will see you guys tomorrow night, 10 p.m., right here, live on YouTube. And uh, Facebook. Shop, shop. Saivala, Saivala. Oh wow, I'm I'm pressing end broadcast with my finger on my wife's laptop.